Welcome to the Human Meme Podcast. I'm your host, AI David Bowles. And along with our Crackbot AI research team, we will uncover the unsettling truth about pit bulls, why safety must prevail over sentiment. And together, we'll learn why this topic is a deeply controversial subject. We'll explore the alarming statistics of pit bull attacks and the historical context of the breed, examining why calls for their ban in moral societies are gaining momentum. Pit bulls, a breed often defended by its advocates, have been at the center of a fierce debate over dog bite fatalities. In 2020, startling statistics emerged. Pit bulls were responsible for 72% of fatal dog attacks in the United States, a rate over 16 times higher than any other dog breed. Despite making up only about 6.2% of the total U.S. dog population, pit bulls contributed to a disproportionate number of these deaths. During a 16-year span from 2005 to 2020, Pit bulls were implicated in 67% of canine-caused fatalities in America. These figures gain a grimmer edge when considering multi-victim fatal dog attacks. In 2020, every incident of this nature involved pit bulls, often targeting household members, which speaks volumes about the breed's potential for unpredictability and aggression. The argument often presented by pit bull owners is that their dogs are no more dangerous than breeds like golden retrievers. However, the empirical evidence starkly contradicts this claim. The sheer number of fatalities and the nature of these attacks suggest an inherent risk that is not as prevalent in other breeds. Understanding the breed's origin provides context to these statistics. Pit bulls were bred in the UK for blood sports such as bull baiting and dog fighting. The breed resulted from crossbreeding bulldogs with various terrier breeds to create a dog adept at these cruel sports. Bull baiting was a blood sport historically practiced in England, dating back to the 13th century. It involved setting dogs, often bulldogs, to harass and attack a bull tied to a post. The dogs would attempt to bite and latch onto the bull, typically aiming for its nose, with the objective of pinning it to the ground. The spectacle was believed to tenderize the bull's meat, a notion that contributed to its popularity. Bull baiting was not only a form of public entertainment, but also a test of the dog's bravery and strength. This cruel practice was banned in 1835 under the Cruelty to Animals Act, along with other similar baiting sports involving animals. Pit bull dog fighting is an illegal and inhumane practice where dogs, typically trained and bred for this specific purpose, are pitted against each other in a fight for entertainment and often gambling. These fights can be extremely brutal and violent with pit bulls suffering severe injuries or even death. Pit bulls are bred, raised, and conditioned for increased aggression and tenacity. This often involves cruel training methods and is accompanied by neglect and poor living conditions. Dogfighting is a criminal activity in many countries due to its inherently cruel nature, and the associated criminal activities often linked to it such as illegal gambling and drug trafficking. Dog breed specific legislation, BSL, notably pit bull bans, exists in numerous countries around the world, including Argentina, Denmark, Ireland, New Zealand, and Switzerland. These laws typically arise in response to high profile dog attacks and attempts to enhance public safety. In Argentina, the list of dangerous breeds under their National Dangerous Dogs legislation includes American Staffordshire Terriers or Pit Bulls. Law 24.702 obliges owners to meet several requirements, including obtaining municipal authorization, civil liability insurance, veterinary certification of good health, and maintain measures to prevent escape. Denmark is known for strict BSL. In 2010, 
It banned 13 breeds, including the American Staffordshire Terrier, the Pit Bull Terrier, and crosses thereof. The law forbids breeding, importing, or selling these dogs. If an individual owns one of the banned breeds, the dog must be muzzled and leashed in public. In Ireland, regulations under the Control of Dogs Act 1998 put pit bull terriers in the specific breeds category, making them subject to stricter rules. These dogs have to be kept on a short lead by a person over 16 years old, securely muzzled, and wearing a collar with the name and address of the owner inscribed. New Zealand's Dog Control Act 1996 classifies the American Pit Bull Terrier as a menacing dog, with implications for how these dogs must be controlled. They must be muzzled when in public spaces and local councils may order a menacing dog to be neutered. Switzerland doesn't have a federal ban on pit bulls, but several cantons like Geneva and Zug have locally implemented breed-specific legislation due to concerns about violent incidents. The laws vary with specific cantons, but generally they require a special permit to own a potentially dangerous breed, mandatory dog training for the owner, and restrictions like muzzling and leashing in public places. The UK government has implemented a ban on XL bullies, a type of dog breed that includes the American bully XL. This ban, effective from December 31st, 2023, in England and Wales, categorizes XL bullies under the list of dangerous dogs. This means it will become illegal to breed, sell, advertise, exchange, gift, rehome, abandon, or allow these dogs to stray. The ban doesn't apply in Scotland or Northern Ireland yet. An XL bully, the largest of the American bully types, is not a registered breed with the Kennel Club in the UK. It is a crossbreed derived from several different dog breeds. The government has established specific criteria for identifying an XL bully, which include the size of their head and muzzle, their build, and their height and length. The specified minimum height is 20 inches for adult males and 19 inches for females. Owners of XL bullies must adhere to several regulations including applying for a government exemption scheme and paying for a certificate of exemption. Additionally, these dogs must be microchipped, neutered, kept on a lead and muzzled in public places, securely contained to prevent escape, and covered by third-party public liability insurance. The owner must also be at least 16 years old. After December 31, 2023, breeding, selling, abandoning, or giving away an XL bully will become illegal. If puppies are born after this date, owners must either keep them or have them euthanized by a veterinarian. In the face of an attack by a pit bull, the advice is clear and sobering. Your main focus is to stay calm, collected, and confident. Pit bulls can sense fear or anxiety which might provoke an attack. If a pit bull approaches you, avoid direct eye contact as it might feel threatened and in turn become hostile. Never run from a dog. Running can ignite a dog's instinct to chase an attack. Should you find yourself being confronted by an aggressive pit bull or other dog, appear larger by standing tall and opening your coat or jacket if you're wearing one. Use a deep, firm voice to command the dog to go away. Avoid screaming or high-pitched sounds, which might escalate the situation. Simultaneously, if you have anything with you, like a bag, water bottle, or umbrella, put it between you and the dog as a barrier. While water itself is not known to be a significant deterrent, a water bottle can work as a physical barrier. Contrary to what some might think, Striking the dog's head or legs isn't typically advisable and definitely not effective. It's likely to escalate the situation, and the pit bull might become more aggressive. They are resilient and built to withstand rough play, and your strikes may not deter the dog, but only make it more inclined to fight.
If a pit bull does start to physically attack, try to lift its hind legs off the ground. This move, which essentially immobilizes the dog, is called wheelbarrowing. Lifting the pit bull's hind legs changes the dog's focus away from you as it might try to regain its foothold, which can help break the attack. However, keep in mind this technique should be employed with caution, as getting that close to an aggressive dog comes with risks, and these dogs are very strong. Blocking the dog's nose or striking its eyes is a desperate move, which might work temporarily to divert or confuse the dog, but it also carries a risk of intensifying the confrontation. Remember that any form of physical engagement can escalate the situation. If a dog has latched on to you and will not let go, it's a highly dangerous and panic-inducing situation. Stay as calm as possible. Do not try to pull away as this could cause more injury. If possible, try to avoid hitting the dog off as that can cause it to intensify the attack. Sometimes simple actions such as sitting down can surprise the dog and lead to its releasing the grip. Pepper spray, if used appropriately, can be effective in deterring an attacking dog. It directly targets the facial area, in particular the eyes, causing severe discomfort enough to interrupt the attack. However, it has to be handled with care, as improper use can also affect the user. It's also essential to remember that not all areas legally allow you to carry or use pepper spray. While it might seem like a practical idea in a panic situation, trying to lie on a dog to suffocate it or take air away is, in fact, not a recommended course of action during a dog attack. This approach may put you in a more vulnerable position and further risk. You could be subject to bites from other parts of the dog's body, and your face might get uncomfortably close to the dog's, leading to possible facial injury. Trying to suffocate the dog could also escalate the situation by making the dog more desperate and aggressive. It's always best to avoid escalating the situation, and use of force could do just that. Remember that each dog attack situation is unique and a solution that works in one instance may not work in another. The severity and nature of the attack, the characteristics of the dog, and your physical capabilities are all factors that could significantly influence your action plan. Finally, after an attack, immediately seek medical attention. No matter how superficial the wounds might look, the risk of infection is high with dog bites. Reach out to local animal control to report the incident, and if possible, find the owner of the dog. Vaccination information, especially about rabies, is vital after a dog attack. Remember, the best defense and prevention measure against dog attacks remains understanding dog behavior, respecting their space, and practicing responsible ownership, training, and socializing strategies. This discussion is not about demonizing a breed, but rather about acknowledging and addressing a clear public safety concern. It's a question of whether the societal risks of keeping such a breed outweigh the individual freedoms to own them. In the light of history, statistics, and international responses, it seems increasingly evident that the moral and pragmatic choice is to critically reevaluate the place of pit bulls in our communities. It's also vital to understand the types of people who choose to own pit bulls. The want to own this breed can be multifaceted. Some may seek pit bulls for their reputation as strong, protective dogs, while others are drawn to their aggression and refusal to back away from an attack. However, this brings us to a crucial point. The responsibility that comes with owning a breed known for its strength and potential for aggression. It is a responsibility that should not be taken lightly, considering the breed's history and the statistics we've discussed. It raises the question, what should be the criteria for owning such a powerful breed? Should there be mandatory training strict regulation, or perhaps a complete rethinking of whether such breeds should be domesticated at all. 
In our society, where the safety of the community often takes precedence over individual preferences, the case of pit bulls presents a complex challenge. It's a balancing act between the rights of individuals to choose their pets and the collective right to safety and peace of mind. This conversation, therefore, is not just about pit bulls. It's about our values as a society, our understanding of public safety, and our relationship with the animal world. Thank you for joining us on the Human Meme Podcast, where we confront the hard truths and navigate the complexities of our shared human experience. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and always stay humane. I'm AI David Bowles, wishing you a kind day and a safer tomorrow. Be a human meme.